So in the laboratory, we worked four years on developing a primer that had the ability of an epoxy, but the fast dry capabilities of an acrylic urethane and the flexibility to not crack. We used to take our epoxies on aluminum and bend it in half and bend it in half and bend it in half and straighten it out and pass it around with no cracks. That same procedure happens with a brand new primer that we've developed. What catalyzes an epoxy? It's a polyamide. We found a polyamide in England that was faster curing and more reactive to the epoxy than any other epoxy curing agent we'd ever seen. And I learned it at a, at a paint show in uh, Washington, D.C. I'm walking through the show and I come up to this tricycle sitting at a booth. And I said, it was candy blue, it was beautiful. I said, what's this tricycle all about? He said, well, we broke through the secrets of how the Europeans are doing the base coats. You know, they were buying the material to do the base coats from Allied Chemical in Dallas, Texas. No, Houston, Texas. And so he said, we figured it out what they were doing and we developed a better version. And I said, can I get the know-how this was done? He said, during this whole show, you're the only customer that got excited about what I'm doing. I've only got one set of papers on how it's done and I'm gonna give them to you. I went back to town and put that together with his help, uh, we came out with the base coats, the encapsulation process. What you have to do is heat flammable liquids to 170 degrees, and then you add this polymer, and it melts it down and into the resins, or I mean into the solvents, and then you put in the metallic and it coats them. I said, well, how does it spray? He said, when it goes through a spray gun, it breaks up and atomizes and as soon as that platelet hits the surface it's re-encapsulated that's how it works that never happens in southern california and i kept looking at the tail lights coming on in front of me and i thought what would happen if i put some light behind a, a red transparent color wouldn't that add a lot of depth i said how long did it take you to develop it joe he said, I worked on it over a two, three year period. And he said, I had my first candy red job in a show in 1956. That was the year I started this company. And I said, of course, George Barris argued with me about that. No, I had the first one. Well, George was the first at everything. You know, he'd argue with everybody. <laughs> but anyway, it was Joe Bailey and and so I like to say he invented it and I perfected it. I made it really work and then I taught people how to do it. You know, it's funny because I always kept all my secrets to myself. I never shared them with anybody because every painter I ever asked how he did something, they lied to me. They didn't want any competition. So I thought I was the same way. I lied to everybody. But when I've started making the paint and I'm selling it, I have to make them successful. So then I started sharing my secrets. I've written like six books on how to do it and I've done at least that many videos. More than that, for sure. I said, how many of you can tell me how many engineering points there are on this snowmobile hood? They didn't even know what I was talking about. I said, the snowmobile hood narrows. It's got a wedge on the side. It's got a, a headlight that sticks out. It's got a dashboard in the back. I said, you straight line, think that side. Then you make your band pass. Now you start with a short one and you start coming down until you get to the other side where you got to shorten the pass again and do the band pass and now start straight line thinking each section. That's what it's about. And then the dashboard and the headlight. You have to avoid those because you can't do a good job on them. You can as you're going along uh, if you're thinking about them. This clear has more absorber in it, but the technology of this clear, of the binder itself, the resin itself, is proactively 
reduce some UV absorbent issues as well. So they both are very comparable on that. This just had the this has the added more. If you have time to wait, the USC01 works fantastic. But if you're if you're one of those guys, to, what I see, and I, I could be wrong, but what I see is most people like their primer, but they always use, like they're clear they always use, because the last thing you want to do is do all this mural work, spray your clear, and then have an issue and start sanding. So if you have time and are really diligent, like John says, set the timer. The USC01. I have a timer on my bench, and I think you need a timer on your bench. USC01 well, works well. Wind up timers. The bell goes off, go in and check it, see if it checks out, and if it's ready, put the next coat on. Neither one of these. That means there's more paint here. And so if you use a 50% pattern overlap when you're spraying curl, or when you're spraying candy, what's gonna happen? Striping. You're gonna get a stripe. So then we pioneered the 75% pattern overlap, so it puts the hot spot down in here, where it doesn't affect anything and it doesn't create that stripe. There's some other things that cause stripes. We talk about paralleling the air cap to the surface. And how many painters do you see painting like this on a flat surface? They're letting the gun droop. Every paint gun made has a tab on the handle. And that's the other thing I like about SADA. Once I've set my pattern, and by the way, I rarely, rarely use the fan control. That's left wide. You can reduce the pattern by bringing the material knob in, and that reduces the pattern. And once you've got the pattern set, you can lock it. Sada is one of the few guns that has a lock. Why is that important? Because when the car starts to slope, like these cars' bodies do, when you get down along the bottom, it allows you to grab the tab and over grip the gun so you can maintain parallel. Now you not only have to maintain parallel this way, but if I go by a door opening and I angle the thing towards one edge of the door, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get a darker candy look because I didn't go by dead parallel. You've gotta go by openings dead parallel. When you come up to the fender and it flares out, you stop and flare the gun so that you're maintaining your gun distance. Trigger. trigger restrictor. It restricts the trigger pull and reduces the amount of material it lets out of the gun and brings the pattern down. Now this particular gun is available and the, R, the HVLP as well, are available in two pattern styles. What they call the I pattern, which is like this, or the O pattern, which is what the old original patterns were. They were bowed. These guns are available with both types. Which do you want to use? It really has to do with you, the painter. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, if you talk to Tony, he was supposed to be here, but I guess he got tied up. He was here last year. Who is the uh, plant manager for SADA? Tony will tell you that everybody has their own ideas of which one to use, whether you want to use the I pattern or the O pattern. I've tried them both. I grew up with the O pattern because that's all there was. Who was the first one to come out with the eye pattern? Iwata. Iwata had the eye pattern. And a lot of people like that gun because it's made for smaller hands. You know, I think the Japanese designed it for their people. And it's more comfortable for some. It just depends, you know.
put my baby on the back of the board.
Yeah. Richie, that one's not your...